Okay. And, um, you know, bittersweet from the standpoint of you get the win, okay, uh, you know, gets us the two and one and excited that. Great homecoming day, so excited about that. A lot of former players here, so really like that. As far as the way we played, I thought for, you know, probably 52 minutes of the game, very pleased with that, right? I thought we, uh, I mean, you're up 45 to 10. You always got to like that. And they score at the 9.54 mark and, you know, it's still 45-17. And then we had the little, uh, you know, we lost our composure. We lost our, uh, uh, you know, wasn't paying attention to things that matter in winning the football game. And then, then we didn't we didn't play very good on defense the last uh, six minutes of the game. We didn't execute anything and walked around and worried about things that, like I said, instead of playing good defense. And then, uh, you know, give them credit, they kept playing and, you know, made, a, uh, you know, somewhat of a game of it late, okay, but at least looked better on, on a stat sheet than it probably did actually watching the game. But, uh, you know, so we got to learn from that. We got to keep our composure, you know, a little chippiness on both sides. You know, you know do I like the fact that, that our play, my players, um, you know, care about each other is certainly 100%, but we got to make sure that we understand that, uh, you know, it's a violent game, it's a physical game, and, uh, you know, Khalid's um, targeting got overturned today. But, but, you know, when you're on the other sideline and you see that, you don't know that that call is going to get overturned. So you're, you know, you can kind of be uh, upset if you're the other team as well. And then that happened to us, and LD, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it hurt him, it knocked him out. And so, and that's right there on our bench, and that kind of, you know, got some, um, you know, kind of a lot of emotions going, and, and we didn't handle it as good as we needed to. We got to learn to, to uh, care for one another, but still play within the rules and, 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 and play solid football. So, uh, anyway, so you get out of there and not, you know, not winning like you felt like you should have, but uh, regardless, we got the win and, and move on this week and get a chance to chase that third win and go on the road. And, uh, you know, Murray. Uh, this is one of the best defenses that my 11 years going against Murray that, that, that they've had. Coach Boone does a good friend of mine and coordinator here for five years, does a great job. He's very multiple and gives us a lot of different looks. And, uh, you know, they're, they're playing hard for him. And, and so he's done a nice job with that defense. And then, you know, you know their, um, you know, their, their background and their, and Mitch's, uh, you know, philosophy on offense. I'm going to go as fast as they can and score as many points as they can. And uh, certainly they got a quality quarterback and a system uh, set up, you know, to do that. So we got to go to work today and, and get ready. When, uh, when do you start assessing your, you and I talked Saturday and you said there's going to be, uh, you know, some attention addressed at, at some of your players for what happened Saturday. Yeah, well, that's a lot of the stuff, you know, we'll keep, I keep in house. I mean, there's things we deal with every day when you're dealing with 100, 110, 18 to 22 year olds. And so, you know, those are things that I'll keep to myself that I've had conversations and we've had different things that we're, we're doing, but those are, those are internal issues. But, uh, Cleed's reinstated, um, you know, so there, there's no penalties, uh, you know, from the league on, on anything that happened. So, you know, we'll be in full force on, on, on Saturday. What do you think about your team's performance against Austin Peay Saturday? Like I said, uh, for 55 minutes, Thought we played well in the last five minutes. Uh, wasn't very proud of that uh, in, 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 in multiple aspects. But, uh, you know, you, you got the win, the homecoming win, and uh, now we get ready for this one. You got one of the, uh, one of the best quarterbacks, really, in, in FCS that you're going up against. Yeah, certainly. For his career, he's done outstanding things. Uh, it's really, I guess, the game, you know, won and lost in the secondary. You know, they, it, it's, it's kind of, their defense has gotten so much better now. Like I mentioned before, um, they've done a great job with that. To where uh, it used to be, that, it used to be that it used to be our defense versus their offense. And you know, can we hold them under? Can you hold them under X amount of points because you you, you liked your matchup that you had scoring? I, I think it's it's com it's a complete football game now. It's going to take a team to win. You're going to have to win on special teams. You're going to have to win on. Uh, you have to take care of the ball, get your, you know, score your, your 28, 30 points, you hope, if you have a good day, and then try to, you know, limit them under that. So, in the past, it was, you know, just try to hold them under 40 because you had a chance. It's certainly not like that anymore. Matter of fact, go back and look at their last two games. You know, they've held opponents to 17 points the last two weeks. They lost a tough one to SEMO, 17-16, and then only gave up 17 to Austin P. And then they're coming off a bye week. So, it allows them to, to get guys healthier and, and have another week to, you know, to get prepared for us. Is it a situation, though, Coach, where 
<clears throat> you just you draw back and you hope your safeties and your DBs do their job, or are you rushing to try to? Flush you the you got to do it all. You got to do it all. I mean, there. Uh, when, when you're playing a, a, a team that's that has an established identity on offense, it's like playing an option offense team, right? I mean, they there's only so many things that you can do when you get spread out like that. Okay, there's you, and to be honest with you, like option teams don't even have to watch tape during the week because they know. It's just kind of like nameless faces that they're playing that they're going to see, a, you know, either this front or this front or this front, you know, throughout the game because there's only so many ways to, to, to do that. The same way when, they, when, when the team spreads you out, right? Are they going to play, you know, two high, one high, or are they going to blitz you? And so they've, they've seen all those different things before. Uh, you got to mix them. You, 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 you know, you can't let them get comfortable with the same thing. Uh, you, know, not, you know, we've had a hard time. We've been able to flush guys out of the pocket, but we haven't been able to contain them. Guys are getting out, and then that puts your DBs in a bind, have to cover that long and stuff. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, our defense staff come up with a plan that we think gives our chance, guys the, the the best chance to be successful. But uh, by no means are we going to just line up in the same formation the whole game, uh, same coverage, and and let them have pass scale. No, we wouldn't do that. This has also become a game where offense helps the defense out a lot in terms of you don't turn the ball over. Got to be. You, you certainly don't change your entire offensive style, but you maybe go more to the run game, shorten the game. You know, it's you know, I don't know if we're capable of that consistently, but we got better this week. Uh, you know, and, and and I'm having to, like I said, continue to change my identity as the offensive coordinator from the standpoint of, uh, you, you know, we, we were able to mix some two backs and some one backs and and and, and some different things today. But we've got to be still be creative and find ways to run the ball because we, you know, LD and Juice are still quality backs, and you know, Najee had a couple good runs there, so. Even though I felt like we didn't run the ball effectively, you look up and you got 188 yards rushing. That's the most we've had in, in multiple weeks. So, um, you know, that's that, that's okay. You know, it used to be we were run first. Okay, uh, I say that, but you know, we threw for 300 yards last year, so I can't. Uh, so it, it changes as Troy continues to play better. Receivers continue to make you know to make plays. Um, you know, and as long as we can stay at that 150-yard mark rushing the football, I think it obviously you know makes us tougher to defend. Um, you know, because college football is about big plays and turnovers. No matter what, you look at the upsets, you look at the wins, who had the big plays, you know, who, who didn't turn the ball over, who got the turnovers, and they're probably winning, you know, 90% of those games. Coach, talk about program guys a lot of times. You take pride in that. Ben Axline had a great performance. Just kind of talk about him. Uh, you know what? And that was – uh, that was rewarding to see. There's a guy that is all about the team, all about the program. Been here six years. Came as a gray shirt. Got activated the spring of his freshman year, so that you know that semester doesn't count against him. Uh, you know, then red shirts the next year, and then and then marginally plays the next year. So it was until his red shirt sophomore year before he actually started getting some quality playing time. And for the last two to three years, he's kind of been a mainstay, just reliable guy. And it's kind of funny. It's a great lesson for all wide receivers and all players in general. When you when you do things the right way, when you put the team first, and you pay attention to details, and you know mix that with you know with some athletic ability, uh, you know he makes plays. He's just he's just reliable, and he's got our biggest plays from scrimmage this year. And you know we kid about it a little bit because we got some faster guys. I mean we certainly do, but you know he's just he's so reliable. He's where he's supposed to be. He's going to make the tough catches. Uh, you know, and that's why at the end of the game, I think somebody sent that down that, uh, or like our coaches knew he was, you know, had a chance to get to that 200 yard mark. And so at first I'd said, you know, no, it's kind of one of those deals where you, he's too valuable to us to risk injury there when you're up 45 to 10. But here's also a guy that's, you know, he's married with two children, he's ready to start his career in December, you know, once, once the season's over. And when he graduates, that I just said, you know what? Let, let's see if we can get him a couple more catches here. And, and you know, he, he's done a lot for me and personally and for this program. And the least I could I could do was try to get him, you know, the, uh, a, a record to to put in his back pocket that he could, you know, tell his kids about when they got older. So that's what that's what we tried. Came up a, he had one. The quarterback's a little bit late there, and the ball went off his hands. That probably that could have got him to the mark. But uh, we were trying to force feed it to him. And matter of fact, Gunner missed a blitz pickup trying to get the ball to him. We took that last sack, you know, just trying to get the force the ball to him, and uh, you know, so it hurt us there at the end. We up here, we were wondering if you noticed, and then all of a sudden, one, one, one. Yeah, we did. Right, yeah, you know, I, I talked myself out of it for a few minutes, but I. 
like I said, that's he knows he's not an NFL guy, but he's had a great college career and just trying to to help him, you know, because it's not his fault that we, at that point we were up 45 to 10 that you're just trying to kind of milk some clock and running. So, uh, you, you know, we thought once they scored again, let's let's see if we can get him the ball. Both quarterbacks took snaps, but yeah. you always get more confidence and we're running that. You over. know, that was good. Uh, you know, we. Uh, I just had made a decision because Gunner's a little bit healthier. He's not, you know, and he'll never be. He's still got some ligament issues there, and his arm strength's not quite what it was a, a month ago. So, uh, and Troy's been doing some solid things. So I just said, hey, you know, Gunner's got the first drive, of the, or second drive of the third quarter, you know, and, and Troy did a great job that, that, you know, Juice fumbles right there at the goal line, you know, where we get six points there and, you know, really have a comfortable lead. But Gunner did good when he came in. It was good to, you know, reward him with some uh, – he's had, he's had tough luck up to this point. He really has. I, I talked about that in the uh, in the Tech game that he started. Uh, so it was good to see him make a few plays. And, and I appreciate his attitude up to this point. Uh, you know, so now we're back to thinking we got two guys if anything happens. But, but uh, you know, Troy keeps throwing touchdown passes and, and the receivers are making plays for him down the field. He kind of gives us a calming effect. Uh, and I really appreciate that about him. Um, I think the familiarity of being in the offense, you know, one more year is is is, is really helped him be able to just kind of um, just helps the whole offense, all the little nuances and the things he's he's heard us me talk about before and watched Jared Neal do it, and he's been able to uh, kind of replicate that. Anything else? Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you guys. I'm, thank you so much.